Hi there everybody, how y'all doing today? Well, I'm out here back on the bike again. Finally got around to my days off. And uh, started working on this kickstand. And I'm pretty much manufacturing it out of everything that I have, or out of things that I have here at home. And let me show you what I've done. Okay, what I've got here is just the pieces that I'm starting with. What I've done, I got a piece of one inch square tubing and I've marked it with a slight angle here. Instead of making it square, I've made it a little bit of an angle. I've drilled a half inch hole all the way through it. And that way I've got a half inch shoulder bolt that will go all the way through it. And when I cut that off, I will also cut this end piece out and it'll make it a three size a three-sided fixture that I can weld to the frame. And then I've taken a piece of the same seven eighths inch tube that I built the frame out of, and I drilled a one half inch hole in it for the shoulder bolt to go through, which this will end up being my kickstand. And with this part right here being cut out, it will be able to pivot like so. And when it comes up like this, it will actually hit on this back part, which the metal will still be here, and that will cause it to stop. And of course the angle is just so that it doesn't come straight off the bike, it leans forward a little bit to help it prevent it from falling over in the event that you're on a little bit of a hill or something and the bike decides it wants to roll forward an inch, the kickstand doesn't automatically collapse up. It's already kinked, or not kinked, but leaning forward a little bit, okay? So basically now I just gotta cut this off, cut that out, and then figure out how long this needs to be and cut it off at the appropriate angle. And then I'll have to figure out how to weld my uh, weldments on for my spring. And that'll come at a later, a little bit later on in this process. But that's where I'm at for right now. I just wanted to share that with you before I got too far off gone in it. And then I'd have to back up and explain it instead of being able to show you. So now you know what's up with that. All right, see how that works? And I'll have a nylock lock on this so it can't unscrew itself and come apart. That'll be fully up. That'll be fully down. And of course I still have to cut this part off to the proper length when I, I figure out how long it needs to be and weld the spring attachments on it. But yeah. And of course I've got to cut this off yet too. I was fine tuning it there. So yeah, it's coming right along. So we interrupt your normally scheduled progress to bring you the bad news. <laughs> I just burnt my freaking angle grinder up. It went pop and I saw a flash and it died. <laughs> Man, it's always something, isn't it? So, thankfully, this old Black & Decker what I'm talking about. I think you can see there, it's Black & Decker brand. And I've dropped it before and broke the plastic handle off and made my own out of pipe and a bolt. It's been a good one. I bought it when I started building the turf surfer. And uh, it's been a dandy. I went through all the go-kart with it and halfway through this uh, Springer bike. But luckily, I also had this little Chicago electric cutoff tool from Harbor Freight. I bought it a while back and have used it a little bit. It's more for cutting thin stuff and fine tuning things and stuff. You can't really put a sand or disc on it or anything like that. It's just little three inch cutting wheels. But I was able to finish that little bit with it. Well, not finish it, but proceed with it enough to get it before I just showed you. So. Yeah. The cord was frayed. The cord was frayed anyway. It's been getting to where it turns on and off and does I wiggle that. I have a feeling it shorted out inside there. And 
Thankfully, they're not terribly expensive. What are they, 30 bucks, $35 for an angle grinder like that? So, definitely going to be in the market for a new one. I'm not going to try to open it up and fix it. You know, I'm just going to get a new one. Um, I'll probably keep that around in case someday I'm just bored and want to see what's inside it. But I know what it is. It's a little motor, you know? And the motor may still be good. Maybe it's just a wiring thing. But I don't feel like fussing with it because it gills on and off anyway. Anyway, enough about that. Just wanted to share. Alright. We'll try to keep going here. Okay, well in short, here's the kickstand. And you can see... And it pivots. I'm gonna just round this out a little bit, deburr it, and basically weld it to the frame. Find a point to hook the spring on one end, and a point to hook the spring on here, and it will be attachable. And then I'll just have to take it back off and cut it to the exact length I want. I went ahead and measured and did some calculations. I hope I haven't gone too short, but if anything, I think I'm too long. So. We will see when I actually get the wheels on the frame and get it propped up right. So, homemade kickstand. That's basically about as easy a way I can think of to do it. I think it'll be fine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look at that. Yeah. Those wheels took a turn for the worse when I clear coated them. They kind of lost their glossy sheen. I know they got three coats of protection on there, but they don't shine like they did before I did that. Anyway, you can tell what that is. We got rubber on the wheels now. Yeehaw. They're not quite as, quite as tall as I had calculated for everything to be. So, they're supposed to be 19 inches tall. I was told by somebody that they would actually be 20 inches tall. And they look more like they are 18 if that no right at 19 so that's cool that's only a half inch difference on well it's an inch difference than what I had calculated for so fine that'll work you may be able to tell it's rained since a little while ago it rained enough to drive me inside. And uh, now my table's all wet again. I think I'm going to clean it off, flip it over, see how much water comes out of it. Even though I don't see any water coming out of the leg today, it sure did the other day. Well, fellers, I got to a point to where I needed my angle grinder. And I just can't do anything without it right now. Well, I'm sure there's something else I could do, but I've got my mind set on what I'm trying to do. So I decided to go ahead and, since I didn't go get one yet, I decided to go ahead and crack this one open and just see what kind of damage there is. And you may be able to see all these little plastic broken bits fell out of it. Yay. All right. And right up in here, I'm going to try to get where you can see what I want to show you. Right in there is the armature. And see how it's on an angle? 
Well, a minute ago I did this, and you can see it just flopping all around in there. There it is. Well, it's just moving back and forth there. Oh, there you go. See it? Anyway, I have a feeling those plastic clips are what retains it. Something's missing out of here, and it's probably those plastic clips. So it's done. It's done. I just got to get a new one, man. <laughs> anyway, so oh, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, first time I ever took one of those apart. I guess I'll put it back together in case I ever need a head. Put that part back on there. Have you ever looked inside of one of these? There's your gear. There's the inside full of grease. Let's use the snot out of her, I guess. Anyway, yeah. Not worth a dang. Alright. I want to share that with you. Now we know. Hmm. Oh, look at it. Maybe tomorrow we'll get back to it. What I was trying to do is put the front end on it. And apparently when I took it off and did my finished welding on the triple trees and the front down tubes, I must have encountered a little bit of warpage because now with both bearings on there, see how that bearing has that little lip, how it sticks up right there? I think you can see it. It's just like an eighth of an inch, and they both have the same thing, both top and bottom. And the triple trees are hitting that. It'll go on the one, but the other one, for say if I put it on the top, the bottom one hits that. And uh, won't, won't slide on there. And so that's why I need my angle grinder, so I can get my flat disc out. And whittle away at this. I tried filing it, and I was getting nowhere. And... I don't want to take my little cut off tool and try to cut it off because I know I won't get it straight. And uh, I just want to get a flap wheel. I just can run it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and keep it even. And sand that down, per se, until I get enough clearance where I can slide that on there. You see where it's shiny there? I took my uh, die grinder with a sanding disc on it and tried to just polish it on thought maybe I could get it to slide in there really tight fit but no it's not going to work I actually need the proper clearances to make it work right so that's what happened and that's where I'm at and I'm calling it a day it's getting dark out here it's been raining I haven't got much done uh, it's always something thanks for watching guys and I'll see ya